What's up, family and friends? Welcome to the Woke Nation, our nation of factual truth. Where we feel free to share knowledge and spread the knowledge of factual truth without fear, without favor, and without faith. Where we encourage us to live our life and live it well through the knowledge of factual truth because it's our lives. I'm personally encouraging us, or you, wherever you are, to live your life, live it well because it is your life. Live your life. You are not born to live for anyone, whether they are your parents, your siblings, your children, or whoever they are, your friends, your neighbor. You are not born to live for anyone. You are born to live your life, live your life well through exploring life, exploring nature, and enjoying it. Don't let anyone rob you your joy for living. Okay, your life is eternal. Your life, death is not your end, and the birth is not your beginning. You need to know yourself. When you know yourself, you know you will not succumb to spirituality or religion, but you'll be living your natural life, which is eternal, which is perfect, which is hundred percent hundred percent perfect. You don't need anyone or any god to complete you. You are naturally complete. So I'm sharing with us today what I titled the "Losers Mentality." Losers Mentality. Because I'm always here to tell the whole truth. We must endeavor, we must try, we must dedicate ourselves to telling the whole truth. Because half truth is a lie. You must tell the whole truth. If it's not the whole truth, it's not the truth. If it's not the truth, or if you say, oh, it's like the truth, but it's not the truth. But you need the whole truth, whole truth. So I, I'm talking about losers um, and uh, I will use examples like uh, Trump supporters in America, or where else? I think some of them are outside America. When you look at them, you see what it means for people to have losers mentality. Uh, they think because they are they are on the losing side, everything must come to hurt, everything must stop, nothing must worry, nobody must be happy. They are the one that's supposed to have it, not the other side. So they have losers mentality you know when they hear something without getting the whole information or the whole detail about it they're wrong with it just trying to justify their stupidity trying to justify their ignorance just trying to justify their blind faith which does not work with the wise the wise always go for the whole details or for the whole thing before they begin to judge you were born to judge you're supposed to judge everything judge everyone anything you can hear anything you can see you have your brain to judge them anyone that tell you you should not judge so that you will not be judged that person is limiting you and that's what spirituality and religion does it's time you begin to judge use your brain you are unlimited nothing can limit you except what you allow so, and uh, because these losers are religious people, they are mostly Christians or Muslims or those that believe in God of Abraham or God of Israel. So I want to use the language they will understand. And some of us that used to be like them also, I use it to encourage us. So welcome to Bible study. I'm, I'm beginning with uh, Psalm 115. Psalm 115, 1 to 3 says, we don't de I'm reading for with a contemporary English version. We say we don't deserve praise. That is the um, loser's mentality. Losers see themselves as people that don't deserve praise. They don't deserve to be there. So they see their leader as the one that deserve it. Or they see their God as the one that deserve it. So you see them hating themselves. Self-hate is what people what people get taught or what people are told to or, or taught to uh, to follow or to or, or to keep to watch especially when they come to themselves no don't take don't praise yourself don't take glory to yourself you have to give all the glory to god as i said last time when what they like happen they give all the glory to imaginary being to god they said is their god they don't share the glory with that God. They don't share the praise with that God. But when something they don't like happen, they call it bad thing or evil thing. Guess what? They begin to blame themselves and the imaginary Satan. They never blame God. Although God in their book claimed to be the one responsible for all that. 
I'm here to tell you the whole truth and that's how it goes. It doesn't matter what any other person is saying. Or when they try to see with their spiritual eyes, when they try to see with their, with their spiritual eyes or with their religious eyes or with their holy eyes, I see even with my eyes closed, with my natural eyes <laughs> closed. So they say we don't deserve praise. The Lord alone deserves all of the praise. Because of his love and faithfulness, I always ask them this. Can you show me where God's love and faithfulness is? There's no place you can see the love and faithfulness of God in the whole world. Unless that person is lying. That person is deceiving himself or herself. But if you can tell yourself the honest truth, if you're the one that cares about the whole truth, there's no place you can see what they call love of God or faithfulness of God. Because when they talk about love, it means they mean that God takes care of them. That's emotional emo, emotional lie. They just keep lying to themselves and think that all of us will abandon reason and enjoy them in their faith, which is BS. There's no faithfulness of God anywhere. You see uh, killers going inside churches, killing people, going inside whatever people are worshipping God, killing them. You see people worshipping God, begging for food, begging for money, struggling, serving as slaves everywhere. So can you show me where is God's love and faithfulness? It's, it is always people who are doing those things. There's no place God takes care of anyone. It is people who does that. It is people who promise and keep that promise. God never done that. No matter how you try, you can never see the promises of God come to pass. And you can never see your wishes come to pass. So people who have losers mentality, uh, who have that losing mentality, they, they give God all the praise. They say they don't deserve all the praise. You ask them why? Because God loves you. God gave you life. Who, who gave you life? Who is keeping you alive? No, life is not a gift. Your life was not given to you. You are eternal being. You always been. Your parents didn't give you life. God didn't give you life. God is not real. Your parents are real. And you can be parent also. It's a natural thing. We born ourselves. We were not created and we don't create ourselves. Verse 2. He said, why should the nations ask? So why should the wise people ask? Why should the people that don't live by faith ask? Where is your God? Like myself. Anyone that believes there is God, anyone that believes that God loves them or God is faithful to them, where is your God? In your time of need, when you go begging for money, where is your God? When you go crying, where is your God? When you go broke, where is your God? When your marriage fails, where is your God? When your business collapses, where is your God? When your, your friend or your, your, your partner or your wife or your husband fail you, when your children disappoint you, where is your God? When you get sick, when you, when you contact that virus or, or, or that disease, where is your God? He you said, why should the nations, nations, people with their brain working ask, where is your God? So this is their answer. Verse 3 will tell you that's always their answer. They say, our God is in the heavens. <laughs> Imagine, let's say your daughter or your sister you know, got pregnant. He's, she's not married. And you ask her, who got you pregnant? And she said, the person is in the heavens. You will skin her love. You will kill her. You will beat her, right? But that's exactly the silly things you claim when you say your God is in heavens. You say, our God is in the heavens doing as he pleases. He's in the heavens doing as he pleases in heaven. Why you are here in penury, why you are here in pain, why you are here suffering. But your father, your God is in the heavens. No address in the heavens, no location in the heavens. You don't know the place. You haven't been in the place. You only imagine it in your head. It will be wonderful. I don't know what for heaven is like. Wonderful, wonder what is, or something that is wonderful, right? So it's a wonderful place. A street made with gold. That's all you have as proof that your God loves you and is faithful to you. But he's in the heavens doing as he pleases. He does not do as he pleases here on earth. 
That's why you see insurgents. You see, that's why you see you see criminals. That's why you see thieves. That's why you see you, you see deceivers. You see them uh, deceiving and exploiting people, because God does not do what pleases Him. Unless, if you say you are suffering, pleases your God. That's your business. If you say you are you are you are, you are sickness, your disease. Or whatever pain you are having, it pleases your God in heaven, who is almighty, who can end it. And then that's your business. I'm not stopping you. Go ahead and keep believing that bullshit. But I will keep using practical examples to show you that. I went to Festival Mall worship rights here in first tag so I, I was doing pedicure the girl that was doing pedicure he did not even have gloves you know she was doing great job okay so we begin to talk and we begin to talk about saying no i don't believe in god bullshit i i, I used to be a pastor and all that you know i say because god is wicked you know her face change her countenance change she becomes so upset i tell her your father must be wicked for her to leave you doing this. Your rich father. She get upset. She said, no, with all due respect, sir, don't bring my parents into this. I say, see how you're upset because I'm talking against God of Israel, not your God. She said, she's a graduate from University of Calabar. And she opened her mouth and tell me that Christianity is not a religion. I said, define religion for me. She said, the Bible say. No Christianity in the Bible. I said, do you know Jesus never said, call anyone of his disciples or anybody in the Bible Christian? He said, no, it's in the Bible. In Acts of Apostles, I said, yeah, he said in Antioch. Jerusalem is supposed to be the headquarter of the body of Christ, not Antioch. That they call them uh, Christians there. Yeah, it, it was a, a, it's an abusive word, abusive name or derogatory name, like how they call black people niggers in America. So she gets so upset, I said, look at, you are following Jesus. In the book of Revelation, they say, as has happened. What of the book of Revelation? Where Jesus himself was revealing to John messages to give to his body or to seven churches. Christian people interpret it means perfect church, perfect body of Christ, bullshit. It's all made up. It never happened. But in that book of Revelation, where he's supposed to know the perfect will of your Jesus Christ, your perfect will of your God, what your God, what your Jesus actually call you. There's no place Jesus said to the Christians in Ephesus, to the Christians in, in Simna. No, he never mentioned that. No Christians in Philadelphia. There's no seven churches, no Christian mentioned there. They were not Christians. It was not Christianity. But she gets so upset. So before she finished, I said, listen, I want to give you a tip. Because I, I always give them tips, right? But it's not a must. Not everywhere I give tips. But when I, I feel great, I, when I see you did a great thing, I want to give you tips. I said, I will give you a tip, but... I want to show you that I'm the one giving you that thing. God cannot give you that thing. That's why I'm giving it to you. He said, no, how much do you want to give to me? I don't want to tell. I said, okay, I will give you 100 naira. He said, okay, keep it, keep it, keep it. So as you as we were taking, uh, talking, I mistakenly say $100. He said, oh, you see, you, now you expose yourself. Do you say $100 or $100? I said, it doesn't matter. I said, I said I'm not giving you tips if you believe God can give you. I'm giving to you because God cannot give to you. So she followed me where I did my payment. She also told the girl, you know, I, I mean, I told the girl, I said, I wanted to give her tips, but she said that, uh, you know, God can give to her. So I'm good, I'm, I'm going, I'm great. The girl also said, are you saying you don't believe in God? I said, no, I don't believe in that bullshit. That's nonsense. <laughs> I just walk away. Because she would have got, gotten that money from me. The guy that cut my hair, I gave her tears. I mean, I gave him tears. But this girl, so uh, what I have witnessed since I'm in Nigeria is this. Men, like when you meet men, mechanics or the people that have been working with men, when I tell them about the uselessness of God and all that, you know, some of them will be laughing. All they know is for me to pay them. But women take it up that's more they take it too serious 
The same thing happening in our families. Look in every Christian family. is the mothers that are so serious about this religion called Christianity. Some of them pretend and you think that they are. They are. Check anywhere you see the father scrolling the children for religion. The mother is the one gingering that father to do that. Women take it too serious. The same religion that 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 that, that brought them down, they used they used to subjugate them and still subjugating them everywhere, and they still dying for it. They still hating for it. If not that they are not that strong like men, quote unquote, they will be physically beating men that say there is no God. Doctor uh, Ben said that uh, a, a black woman spat on him or spit on him because he told her that Jesus is, is not white. A black woman spit on him. Blacks, women, women. Because they don't give themselves praise. They give all the praise to God. They see themselves as losers. God is the winner. So you see them because they believe in God. They say, I am a winner. You cannot be a winner by faith. You can only be a winner by participating. You don't participate by faith. You don't do anything by faith. You do things. You participate in things by knowledge. If you go by faith, you are a loser. That's why you are a loser. When you say you are living by faith, when you say you believe in God, you are a loser. And that's why you have losing mentality or loser's mentality. That's what you have. Claiming that you don't deserve any praise. Oh, oh you are God. The, the God deserves all the praise. So that you will not miss heaven. While you are suffering here, your God is in the heavens doing what pleases him. Your prosperity does not please him. So that's why you are giving for him to prosper you, for him to see how you are suffering and intervene. He can't see your suffering. He can't see how, 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 how disturbed your life is, how disturbed your children is, how disturbed your parents is. You go about begging for money to take care of your parents, begging for money to take care of your children. It doesn't please him to do something for you. You have to go with on your knees begging people for financial aid. Begging doctors to take care of your parents until you raise money. Some of you, you give back to, to a child in a hospital. They will not release you because you don't have money to go. Then somebody happened to see, to see your suffering and show you that pity that humanly we show. You say it is God. God use you. Thank God for you. Thank God you are stupid. Another word for saying you are stupid means you are God. When I say you are God, I mean you are stupid. <laughs> God that is still in the heavens, doing what pleases him, while his children are, are suffering here on earth. I'm telling you the whole truth, and that's what you must do. The people with loser's mentality lack self-knowledge. Self-awareness. They don't know themselves and they don't care to know themselves. All they care to know is God that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. He does not exist and they cannot raise the dead. But they said I, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection because it is written in a book, not because it is real. They have not seen this God, and this God have not raised any dead. Many of them that decreed and declared before the beginning of this year that they will not bury the dead, they are already buried dead. They are already burying the dead. They are already burying dead people in their families. They lack self-knowledge. And when you lack self-knowledge, you lack self-respect. You can never respect yourself. You begin to respect God you cannot see. You begin to respect those you call men of God. You even see some, some women, they don't respect their husband, but they are pastors. They lack that self-knowledge. They don't know themselves. They don't know their husband. They don't know their children. So they know God. And they believe this person represents God. So the glory I supposed to give to God now, let me share a little with this idiot that is rep representing God. They have imaginary knowledge. 
believers, those who have losers mentality, they have imaginary knowledge. They believe to know what they believe in. I know in whom I have believed. It's a lie. You don't know whom you have believed. You only believe who you don't know. When I mean no, it means sin. You cannot claim to know the God you have not seen and cannot see. The God that you will have to see over your dead body does not exist. The God you have to see over your dead body is worthless to you. The God you have to see over your dead body is useless to you. They have imaginary knowledge. I know God I serve. I know the word of God. I know that no, you, don't, you are a believer. And the believers don't want to believe the truth. They want to know the imaginary. They want to know the lie. They embrace the lie with all their might. But show them the truth. They hate you with all their might. They see you as anti-God, anti-Christ, which the badge I wear proudly. I am anti-God, I am anti-Christ, I am anti-religion, I am anti-spirituality, anti-anything that is based on belief. Because they have imaginary knowledge, you begin to see them to believe in the impossible. They begin to believe that God can make a woman pregnant. They begin to believe that God can give you children. It's impossible. God can never give anyone a child or children. God can never get any woman pregnant. No matter how much you pray, no matter how much you fast, a man must impregnate a woman or they take a man's sperm and inject in her. But God cannot make it happen. There's no such thing as miracle from God. It's all these criminals selling it and deceiving us. Many of us are suffering and, uh, and dying in Africa because of faith. All these criminals you come and of God are selling. Selling imaginary product to people and collecting their money. In exchange, using it to buy private jets, using it to buy, build churches, using it to buy new cars. Think about it. If they are servants, why are they riding on new cars but you are not? They're supposed to be the ones serving you. You're supposed to be their master. They are there to serve you. Even your book said that the angels of God are your servants. Not to talk your fellow human being that came up with some imaginary nonsense and said God called them. They become addicted to the Bible, become addicted to the things of God, which is all made up by man. And you are wasting your time and your resources with and to them. You have to wake up. They have imaginary knowledge, that unproven knowledge. They cannot prove it. It has not been proven that there is God. They tell you, can you disprove that there is no God? And they are the one that said there is no God. I mean, there is God. I said there is no God. And you cannot see God. If I tell you there is God, then I will show you God. You are the one that said there is, there is God. So show me God. I said there is no God. So I don't have to show you God. Because I tell you the truth. There is no God. But if you say there is God, then please show me that God. If you cannot show me that God, just shut up. You are operating on what I call imaginary knowledge. You don't know what you believe, but they tell you faith is substance. Faith is a spiritual knowledge. I used to preach that nonsense. Losers mentality. These people, they never discover or come to the knowledge of factual truth. They never discover the truth. Although you see them always learning, trying to learn. Claiming to go, you see them in Bible school, theological school, Bible class, Sunday school, all different seminars, you know, teaching. They keep trying to learn, but they never come to the knowledge of factual truth. They never discover the truth. So they lie, they call it the truth. And they tell you by faith. You tell them, no, as that girl, that's what all of them they said, oh, it's by faith. You can't you, you can thank God by faith. Why should I encounter God by faith? Why you are telling me that with your mouth? So tell me that by faith too. Don't open your mouth. Tell me that there is God by, uh, by faith. Let me see. A God you can preach with your natural mouth. 
should be able to be seen with your natural eyes. If you can preach God with your natural mouth and tell me that I need spiritual eye to see that God, you are stupid. You cannot stand before me and utter that nonsense. How about churchgoers? Although even in their book, their Jesus Christ, who's supposed to be the author and the finisher of their faith, warned them not to go to church. Read it, Matthew chapter 24, 23 to 26. Jesus warned his disciples never to go to church because he said when they go there, that's where false Christ and false prophets perform miracle signs and wonders. So he told them, if they tell you Christ is there, he said, do not believe it. He said, if they tell you that, said, do not go out. But every Sunday you are going out to church. Some of you, every midweek service. Some of you, five days in a week you are in the church. And that's why your life is so miserable. Because the time you're supposed to spend for your family and for your business, you are wasting it in church or religious activities. You will never come to the knowledge of the truth. Because you have loser's mentality. You are a loser when you are living by faith and not by sight. You are a loser. And that's why you depend on what people you call atheists are making. People you call antichrist are making those things. Because you are a loser, you don't have ability to make. Had it been your God is real, you won't be buying anything made in China. You won't be buying anything made in anywhere. You will be making things yourself. Your God is an enemy of progress. Read it. Genesis chapter 11, 1 to 9. People decided to make things and build things for themselves. God get jealous, get angry, and come and scatter them. Is there. Your book said that God is the enemy of progress. He hates knowledge. When he created Adam and Eve, not me, he created Adam and Eve. God did not create me, he created Adam and Eve. He chased them away from the garden because they acquired knowledge. God is anti-knowledge. Anything that is against knowledge is against prog progress, against prosperity. And that's why you see people that are serious with God, they are in penury, they are so poor. That's why you see the ones that are using the name of God to make it. You call them ministers of God. They are thieves. There's no God. So these people, they boast in their ignorance. They boast in their poverty. They boast in their suffering. They boast in their insecurity. Claiming to have faith in as, as substance. That's what developed that loser's mentality in them. Claiming to have their faith. Their faith is their substance. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is substance, is a substance of uh, blah blah. Evidence of blah blah. So the evidence they have is faith. The substance they have is faith. Substance like knowledge. That's faith? No, faith can be knowledge. Faith can be evidence. Have you seen anyone that go, went, to, or go, went to the court of the law and say your honor? Oh, my Lord, as they say in Nigeria and some places in Africa. America don't say my Lord. No, it's your honor. <laughs> but Africa still say my Lord. Slave mentality. He said, have you got to call and say my proof, my evidence is faith. God said to me to do this. That's why I did it. And judge is okay. You are free. No. God told me to kill that person because he did not believe in the word of God and every life belonged to God. God asked me to kill him. That's why I came. You say that in the court, that God is your witness. God is your proof. Effort is your evidence. They will start beating you from that court, especially in Nigeria. People will jump on you to beat you. But the same people say you should be living by faith. They will be against you. When you do something against them, they will go and sue you. They will go and report you. They will not wait for their faith to work against you. They say God will punish you. Okay, you do something. They are the one punishing you, not God. Muslims will cut your head. Christians will wish you evil because government represent them. But both of them are dissenting. Christians, Muslims, they are killer. They hate anyone that they, they can kill anyone for their faith. Another thing they use as substance, which they claim to be true, is what hope. They have hope as substance. Remember, they have imaginary knowledge. I hope. God is the hope of Israel. God is my hope. I hope this will. Hope is for slaves. Just as faith is for slaves. Wise people don't live by faith. Wise people don't live in hope. 
And where you see people living in hope is where corruption is. In America, where I live, when you walk, you don't, uh, they don't say, I hope they will pay me. No, you know they will even beg to pay you to the last dime. They don't want to make mistake. In fact, they hire somebody to make sure everybody is paid to the last penny. <laughs> but not like a place in Nigeria where people are, are praying and begging for them to receive the money they work for. Teachers are not being paid. And these people will come and tell you there is God. The same person that is crying that is not being paid will tell you there is God. God is faithful to me. Why, why is God faithful to me? I'm alive. That's nonsense. That's the lie that I used to be a minister of God. I used to be a bishop. Not just talking. I'm not talking. You can ask questions. You can ask around. You can see my old profiles. Even this one. I had them with, as a Christian before. So they have hope as substance. That's what they have. So you see them suffering, going to church from year to year. Nothing is changing. Nothing, their condition is not changing, but they have hope. Miracle will happen. God will intervene. The God of that man of God will visit me one day. If you not me, he will visit my children. <laughs> I asked my father that. Imagine my father at my, at my own age. I am old man already. My father is still alive and young. I ask him, you keep talking about God. May God bless you. When will this God bless you? He says it's coming. No, it's not. Look at me. My father is, <laughs> is older than me. Eh? And my father is still hoping for miracle. Miracle that he has been hoping before I was born. He, he's, he's still hoping it. The same thing is happening in your family. But some of you are too timid to say it. You say, no, I don't want to wash your dirty linen. It's not dirty linen. It's the bondage we are living in. There's not, nothing dirty about saying the fact what is happening in your family so that others will learn. Learn from others and others learn from you. Stop closing your mouth and looking for those who are sharing their own. You say you are lying. You are learning from them. If you are not sharing too, you, you, what you think you are learning from them will never work for you. We have to be mutual for things to work. Positive, positive, positive and negative bring them together. You and others, you bring them together. That's how things work. You can't cheat them forever. Another silly thing they claim to have is love. A substance. Oh, the love of God. Lord, God loved me. God gave me love. God, God give me brain. God gave me... No, no. Love is evil. Love is empty thing. This thing you call faith, hope, and love, they are empty reflections. I'm the reflection of God. I'm the, 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 the love of God. If you look at me, you see the love of God. It's a lie. You cannot reflect God because God does not exist. If you say you are reflecting God, you say that's why you are reflecting nothingness. You are reflecting suffering, evil, because God does not exist. And whatever does not exist is evil to nature, evil to you. You are not the expression of any God. Stop this, the, lying to yourself. I'm living by faith. I have hope and I love the Lord. I'm, I, I'm, I, I am the expression of God. I, I reflect God's glory. I, no, you don't. You are bragging. You are boasting in ignorance. Faith, somebody say, is the arrogance of, igno of the ignorance. Or arrogance of ignorance. That's what faith is all about. You're bragging in ignorance. You're bragging in your suffering. You are, bra you are bragging in your poverty. You're bragging in your insecurity. Imagine somebody living in Nigeria say that, no, I'm not poor. I'm not poor. No, you are. Even the richest man in Africa, Dangote, is poor. When it comes to things of life, when it comes to condition of Nigeria, if you are Nigeria, you are poor. No matter how rich you claim to be, you are. It's only in Nigeria they recognize you or where they want to take your money. But when it comes to the, if you see Dangote on the street of America, you wouldn't know, you don't, you wouldn't know it's Dangote. It's in Africa, you know, oh, that's nonsense. You are not the expression, you're not the reflection of God, but humanity. When you see me, you see you. We are real. You are expression of humanity. But they use their book to deceive you, telling you, no, you are nothing. Give all the praise to God. 
They create that loser's mentality in you. You begin to see yourself as a loser. And God is a winner. You cannot win without God. Oh, I need God. God is a winner. God make me a winner. I'm a winner. No, you're not. You are a whiner. You are suffering. It's time you wake up to know yourself and stop believing. Stop believing in yourself. Start knowing yourself. Oh, don't believe in anybody. Believe yourself. No, don't believe in yourself. Know yourself. You cannot do what you believe. You do what you know. Everyone that tries to do what they believe ends in failure. But people that do what they know, even if they fail in it, they will keep trying until they succeed. Because it's knowledge. Knowledge needs to another knowledge. When you know this one, okay, you find that it's not working. Okay, now you still have knowledge. You keep doing it another way until it works. Seeing is knowing, not believing. Seeing is not believing. That's another lie they told us. Seeing is believing. Seeing is knowing. Seeing is not believing. You, If you have seen me, you don't believe me, you know me. If somebody told you about me, you say, okay, I believe, okay, that guy is this in Facebook, that guy, they say that guy always say, talk against God, against Jesus. Okay, you believe them. Then you don't stop there. If your brain is working, you say, I must, I must see him. Then you see him. You see him. You know me. Seeing is knowing. Our people say, oh, yes, see. Oh, yes, see. Uh, oh, yes, see, Lele. I see how, I see how we Like, if you say, look at this. I say, okay, show, show it to me. If you say something exists, show it to me. Not when you say something exists, I say, show it to me. You say, no, it's spiritual. Then why are you telling me that? I am natural. I am carnal. I am physical. I don't need anything spiritual. I don't need anything invisible. No. There is nothing invisible in nature. Hear what I say? There's nothing invisible in nature, including the ones you cannot see. If you want to see them, you can see them. That's why you see people developing. There was a time you can stay in Nigeria and see somebody in Ghana. But today you can sit anywhere in the part of the world so long there is a, smart, a smartphone there and there is internet connection. You can see somebody wherever they are so long there is internet connection. You can see them. Can, can't you see? You cannot touch that person but you can see that person. How about your God? You cannot see your God. You cannot touch their God. You can't smell your God. Nothing. You, are, can, you cannot use your God to do anything. He cannot intervene in your case. Anywhere in reality. Yet you want us to continue believing in that nonsense. That's stupidity. So believers are making up results to justify their faith. To justify their hope. To justify their love which they have for that useless imaginary God that cannot do anything for them. Everything you say is a miracle of God. It's man's doing. All of them. Imagine people that went through surgery and survived and said it's, it's, it's miracle. It's not. It's people, it's science. People's doing. Okay, who give the science the brain? To, no, no, brain is not a gift. It's a natural thing. All of us, we are born with brain. You say it's God that give it to them. Why can't your God give it to you? Why are you going to them for surgery? Let your God give you the ability to perform that surgery on yourself. Since with God, all things are possible. Why is it not possible for you or, with, or, or for you in your own case? But you go and get help from people. Then you say it is miracle. It is your God. You are stupid. And you want us not to say that. We, be, we keep saying that until you wake up. Remember, they are making up results and telling you faith works, prayer works. It's a lie. After prayer, they go and walk. They tell you it's because they pray. No, it's not. I don't pray. I still make better than you. People, China, Chinese people don't pray like you. And you are buying all the made in China, importing goods from them. Without them, you won't be surviving today. They even, you are even borrowing money from them. And all of you are saying, Allah Kubaru, or thank you, Lord Jesus. Yet you are borrowing from Chinese people. Learn how Chinese people begin to build themselves. They have to detach themselves from religion. 
make sure their government is not influenced by religious people. If you have religion, you can never be in Chinese government. You can never. And that's how they start the build. Today, they become envy of the war. And you think your prayer will do it. You are still praying for God of Israel to be your God. The God of Israel that did not deliver them even in Germany. <laughs> it is your God. <laughs> even as we still pray, we're still talking, they are still fighting over our land with Palestine, right? Both of them, you see what happened over last weekend, right? In Gaza. The, people, the Israelis and the, they call them the jihad people, they were shooting missiles. They weren't praying, you know. Both of them believe in God. But none of them say, in the name of Allah, stop. Or this one say, in the name of Jehovah, uh, Yahweh, stop. No. They get weapons, built by science. People begin to shoot missiles. But you are here in Nigeria fasting and praying. God of Israel must answer my case. Now, the, what God of Israel cannot do does not exist. Idiots. Wake up, my people, and trust all that. They claim to be the reflection of imaginary God. Stop claiming that. There is no God. You can be a reflection of God you have not seen. I can say that I am a reflection of my father and my mother. Not only my father, not only my mother, but a reflection of my father and mother. So when you see me, you know. You don't need anybody to tell you that I have parents. You cannot tell me, prove it. Okay? You are the proof. So like when you tell me to prove that there is no God, your life is the proof. There is no God in your life. God cannot do anything for you. See how you are suffering. You cannot reflect what is not real, my people. You cannot. If you, if, if, you see, if you see your shadow, your shadow is not the shadow of invisible, what, does not, what is not real. And when somebody sees your shadow, they can see you. Let's say you're on the other side and there's sun hitting you from that side. Although I cannot see you, but I can see your shadow here. Then we, I can follow that shadow to see you. But this one, they tell you, for you to see God, you have to die over your dead body. That's when you will see God. There's no place is written in the Bible that you can see God now. No, he said you will see him when you die. I think first John chapter 4, right? Mm -hmm. That's why when you go down, I think verse 20 or verse 22, he said that how can you say you love God who you have not seen? When you hate your brother who you can see, you can see your brother, you can see your sister, but you can never see God no matter how you try. But they're succeeding in brainwashing you. Hating your brother, hating your sister, you can see. For God, you cannot see. Wake up. You need to see what is being reflected. Shadow. He's talking about if oh, this thing is seen when light reflects. Okay. From the sunlight. Okay, you see the sun. Light doesn't just shine from nowhere. As you believe your God just is seen from nowhere. <laughs> there is okay the earth where did it come from I don't know do you want me to tell you it come from your ass so be, you believe what somebody made up nothing tell you that God created them you are, it's people that made up say God created them there is nothing that tell you God created them no one tell you God created them it is somebody that formed that and begin to tell you God created you God, no God didn't tell you Has, have you seen any God say that he created you at any time no a lie is not a proof. You cannot present lie as proof. As Trump supporters are doing in America. They always present lie as their proof. Oh, um, FBI went and executed illegal search warrant. They say, no, it means uh, they, uh, I can't trust the government. Oh, they, they hate Trump. Oh, yeah, yeah, because they want to run for president. Bullshit. Bullshit. You can't tell me you still believing in Trump and you want me to be engaging with you for anything. You are stupid. After all the lies, all the proof show that he lied. You still believe him because of what? Because of party? Because of, because of what? And you see that they want everything to come to end because it's not their man winning. Loser's mentality. They even believe that hey, 
JFK is coming back. The, all of them are religious people. All the throne supporters, they are the same thing, the same way they operate in their religion. They are the same way they operate with their uh, court leader, Trump, or their pastors. A lie is not proof. When you, when you present a lie as proof, you are practicing what is called belief only. According to Mark chapter 5, verse 36, he said, Jesus said to her, right, or uh, to him, do not be afraid, only believe. That's what you are doing when you believe the lie, when you are living the lie, when you are presenting the lie as proof, when you are presenting the Bible as proof. You only believe. You don't know. And that's why you, you, you are demand, they, they demand you believe. There's a lie in it. It's a lie. They tell you to believe. But if it's truth, you need to know. There's no lie in truth. There's no lie in knowledge. You need to know. Faith is living the lie and making up things as the substance or as the truth of the lie. Faith is living the lie. Anyone that says they're living by faith, they're living the lie. They're not living the lie. Look at pastors. Look at bishops. Look at popes. Look at all the imams. Look at all the ministers of God. They are living the lie. You see them torturing themselves in the name of praying and fasting. They are living the lie. You see them dressing awkwardly. They are living the lie. You see them claiming that the world is a creation. The, the world is a creation of God. It's not. And we keep saying that until you wake up. The world is not. The, there's no who that created the world. There's no who who created the world. No who. No. And if you want to even make a, a sense, if it's okay, somebody made it happen. Your ancestors did that. You will not you say no. Because they have brainwashed you to believe the book instead of you using your brain. Use your brain and tell me that it was God who made the things you are wearing today. Use your brain and tell me it was one person that made things that you are even wearing on your body. Use your brain. How can you look at all of it? Okay, let's say, let's give it to you. It's creation. It was created. How can you come up with that silly idea that it was created by one person? One God created all these things. And they tell you that that God asks you, you should not serve other gods. Yet you still insist it's one God that created them. <laughs> God created the gods and said you should not serve. No. God is in competition with those gods. He's a jealous God. He's jealous of those gods. Those gods created also, but he said, do not serve those gods. And they remove goddess. Oh, where is the goddess? Where is the goddess? Your God have a son without a wife, and you still worshiping that God. Your God have a son without having sex with a woman, and you still having that, worshiping that God. Do your father have you, or your mother have you without having sex with a man? But you believe the nonsense. Because it is written by your slave masters. Wake up. This, the word is not the, is not the proof of God's existence. The word is, oh, see the trees. Who put the sky there? Who put this there? Did they, they, did they just come? Idiot. Did they tell you somebody put them there? Or your God put them there? And don't you know that the God you are calling about is a new God? When it comes to belief system. You are God of Israel. You are Jehovah. You are Allah. You are Yahweh. You are Jesus Christ. All of them are new gods. People were having better ones, which they call gods and goddesses, before this one. Then you just came up today and you condemned yesterday. Think. So you see these people with losers' mentality be like. It must be as we claim it to be. It must be as we decree it or you perish. Believe or you perish. Repent or you perish. Fuck you. Repent to what? Believe what? I don't repent, I research. I don't believe, I know. That's why I live better than you. You may have more money than me, but I live better than you. You are living in fear of death. I am not. I welcome death. You are angry. You think death is wicked. You think death is a thief. Death is bad. Wish me death. 
let me die now. Can it happen? <laughs> Can your God kill me now? I surrender. Let your God kill me. Boom! I come back to life again. With the incarnation. See? <laughs> <laughs> mm. they be like it must be as we claim or the world we end so they come up with end time it is end time it's the last days the end of the world is at hand God, Jesus is coming very soon give your love to God repent, repent you will go to hell if you don't repent because you are bullshit you are claiming you want me to repent I don't want to go to your heaven fuck your heaven the reason why I don't want to go to heaven because God is there. God is evil. God is wicked. The God that drowned children. The God that commanded a man to keep pregnant women. Open their womb and bring the, the babies and dash them to the stone. You want me to be with that God? Fuck that God. They made up order. Judgment day. Which day? Be specific. Anybody that says judgment day of God, be specific. Tell me the date. Stop running your mouth. God will punish you. When? <laughs> when? Be specific. Stop making claims and think somebody like me will be moved. No, you are you you cannot you cannot see the promises of promises of your God. And you cannot see your wishes come to pass. It can never happen. You must do something for something to come to pass. Nothing just happen. Oh, I'm waiting for miracle to happen. It will never happen. I'm waiting when things will happen. It is somebody that must make things happen. And that, why not you? Why not you be the one that will make that thing happen in your life, in your family, in your environment? There's no God coming to do anything. There's no Jesus coming to do anything. There's no angel coming to do anything. You are the one that will do something. I'm the one that will do something. That's how we can build ourselves again, as our great ancient ancestors did. Let us begin to speak to ourselves again. Come, let us make. Come, let us build. That's the only way we can succeed. And no God, no devil can stop us when we decide to build ourselves. Wake up. They begin to tell you about eternal punishment caused from God. Fuck that God. Cause is empty word. Blessing is empty word. Oh, I'm going, I, want, I, want, I want you to bless me. That's nonsense. Go and get your parents' blessing. That's nonsense. Parents blessing you. Oh, if I don't marry, if I, I will not marry you because my parents is not in support. And we need their blessing. No, you don't need their blessing. You don't need blessing. You don't need cause. All you have is your brain. That's all you need. Use your brain. Don't you see that Africans cursing themselves, but they don't curse white people? All their food is working against themselves, but they never try to use it against white people. Although you work against white people in, in Haiti. But do you see how timid black people are today? They are cursing only themselves and blessing white people. Their voodoo, their juju, it doesn't work against white people. It's only working against themselves. Then they, yet they will not think. It's laughable how they claim their wishes will come to pass. You will see what God will do. You haven't seen what God can do. Are you telling me that don't, don't accept that God, that I will see what your God can do? Let your God feed me, feed you. Let me see you. I don't. I'm okay. I don't need your God to assist me in anything. I don't need divine anything. I'm okay. But you that is talking, let your God give you. Let me see. If you are living in Nigeria. Let your God give you steady power supply without generator, without you investing money or paying for it. Let your God give you steady power supply. Let me see. In fact, that's too much. Let your God give you free Wi-Fi so you will stop paying what you are not even enjoying in Nigeria. Let your God give you strong, free Wi-Fi. He cannot do that. Your phone will soon die because the battery is not charged. <laughs> and you want to come and argue with me? I don't argue with sheep. You are sheep. Wake up. Since you cannot see God, you cannot see God's promises. Since you cannot see God, you cannot see your wishes. You cannot see your claims. You believers, so long you cannot see God, you can never see the promise of God. Claim any promise of God in the Bible and let me see it come to pass. And I show you that you are lying to yourself. And you think I will fall for that. You want me to join you in your circle of lies? Or uh, liars? No. 
Since you cannot see God, you cannot see the promises of God. It can never happen. Show me anybody that is enjoying the blessing of God, I will show you a thief who is stealing from men and claiming it is God blessing him or her. I show you a thief who is even robbing himself. He went and used his might to achieve something. He said it is God. He's giving glory to God. You are robbing yourself. You are robbing others in the name of God that does not exist. These people are lost in this world, but they are winners in heaven. <laughs> they are losers in this world. They are not winning, but they say that, like in Nigeria, a Muslim is the president of Nigeria. If Nigeria is run by the Muslims, right? But Christians are claiming they are winners. Bishop Erebo, I'm a winner. All his followers, I'm a winner. You see the stickers, I'm a winner. You are not, you are a loser. <laughs> The president, the main leaders in Nigeria are Muslims, not Christians. Yeah, Christians are saying they are winners. Winners by faith. That's what you are. Imaginary knowledge. You don't have actual knowledge. You don't have substance. What you have is faith, hope, and the love, which are chains that hold you in bondage of Christianity or religion. Heaven is a fairy land. There's no God in heaven and there's no heaven in heaven. <laughs> because they say God is in the heavens, in the heavens, doing what pleases him. No, it's not. Remember they said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 20, Jesus said, they said that, what shall it profit a man to gain, let, let me read it. I, I like to read it with this translation. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Idiot, quit soul. There's no soul to be lost. No, it does not exist. This is the soul. You can touch the soul. Any invisible soul, invisible spirit is a lie. Quote me. Uh, I was talking about Matthew chapter 16. Hear what he says. So I will read this couple of places and show you the loser's mentality. What they, why they have that mentality. You know, they are, they are losers in the world, but they are winners in heaven or in the fairy land where they believe they will have their final place which does not exist. Mm, 16 verse 26, right? Mm -hmm. Hear what it says. What will you gain if you own the whole world but destroy yourself? What will you give to get back your soul? That's nonsense. Nobody owns the world. Nobody can own the world. God don't own this world. This world is our eternal home. It's our home. We are living in it free of charge. If it's evil man that is building and charging us for all that, say, what shall it profit you if you own the whole world? It will profit you a lot if you own the whole world. It will profit you a lot if you gain the whole world. You will never lose anything if you gain the whole world. You are a winner. If you have not gained the whole world, you are not a winner. You are making mouth. You are a slave claiming to be free. You are not. You are a poor person claiming to be rich. Uh, let the weak say I am strong. That's a biblical lie. Then see another place I will show you. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 10 to end and chapter 4, 10 to end. I will read it to show you how they are losers in this world because they have faith, hope, and love in heaven that they will be winners there. Hear what it says from verse 10. He said, in fact, the new agreement is so wonderful that the law is no longer glorious at all. Law of God. The Christians condemn the law of God and they say that through Jesus Christ they will go to that God. Okay. <laughs> the law was given with a glory that faded away. According to Christians, not according to the Jews. But the glory of the New Testament is much greater. So Jesus is greater than God because it will never fade away. It's a lie. If, <laughs> there's no glory that will not fade away. No glory. Every glory must fade away. Because glory is a matter of nonsense. It's something people make. It's all, like people make something and say that thing will not fade away. It will last forever. No. It will never. He said, this wonderful hope makes us feel like speaking freely. Do we hear that? What they have is what? Hope. He said, this wonderful hope, empty wish, this wonderful hope makes us feel like speaking freely. 
Although we are not free, but this wonderful hope makes us feel like speaking freely. We are not like Moses. Eh? So Moses, Moses appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration. And you say you are not like Moses. Okay. His face was shining, but he covered it to keep the people of Israel from seeing the brightness, brightness fade away. The people were stubborn and something still keep them from seeing the truth, like Christians, when the law is read. <laughs> Let me put it this way. Africans in Abrahamic religions are stubborn and something still keeps them from seeing the truth when the Bible is read, when the Quran is read, when Torah is read. Something is keeping them from seeing the truth. What is keeping them from seeing the truth? Faith, hope and love. <laughs> Hear what he says. Say, only Christ can take away the covering that keeps them from seeing. I was I, I I I bought a flash drive and I, I asked one guy, the guy to put a you know Nigerian Igbo music in it. So this guy, I tell him I don't want any music that have Jesus and all guy. You know all our music are religious for now. Both Pericoma, both the one we call traditional music. All of them are religious songs, okay? But at least the one I know Christians hate. And that's what I want to listen to. Although he's singing the same thing that I'm singing in the church, but because he's not going to church like them, they condemn him like Pericoma or Pericomo. So I was listening then, I was hearing that track. He said, He said, Only Jesus, 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 I said, Nonsense. I will take it to that guy. I said, Delete that thing from that. I, will, I don't want to hear that. How can you be going through all you? You still telling me that Jesus gives children, Jesus gives husband, Jesus. No, God don't give anything. Jesus don't give anything. Tell yourself the honest truth. Stop being stupid by faith, or because you are raised in a religious family and you still believe in that nonsense. From child, you have been believing the same nonsense you are believing now as parents. You are no longer a baby. You can use your brain that your parents raised you in a religious way. It doesn't mean you will die in it. Yeah, they use Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 to deceive you. They tell you to train a child in the way he should go. When he grow up, he will not depart from it. That shows you the power of indoctrination and brainwashing. As a child, when you don't have a say, when they can beat you up, that's when they groom you to believe in this nonsense. There is God. There is Jesus. God can give you this. Jesus can give you that. It's a lie. At your age, tell yourself the truth. You are walking. You are struggling to make it. You are struggling to live. Some of you say, happy birthday to me. I survived. Yet you say there is God giving you what? Or doing what? He said only Christ can take away the covering that keep them, them from sin. He said, ah, Christ has not removed any covering from all these believers that don't know shit. They don't know the judgment day. They don't know the, the day Jesus will come again. That is covering, covering them. And that covering is called the word of God. It's covering them by faith, covering them by hope, covering them by love. Yeah, verse 14, he said, the people were stubborn. He said, okay, that, verse 15. He said, when the law of Moses is read, when the law of Moses is read, they have their minds covered over. So when the law of Moses, which instituted titan, offering, when it's read in the church, they it covered their minds over with a covering that is removed only for those who turn to the Lord. You see? So if you turn to God, it will not be removed. But when you turn to Christ, that's when it will be removed. You see? They are making Christ greater than God. Which is why the people of Israel, according to the Bible, killed Jesus. They say he was man, he was a man making himself equal with God, breaking the Sabbath. John chapter 5. You can read it yourself. He said the Lord and the Spirit are one. And the same. And the Lord Spirit sets us free. It's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. And he says, so our faces are not covered. Right? They show the bright glory. See the reflection. They show the bright glory of the Lord as the Lord Spirit makes us more and more like our glorious Lord. It's a complete lie. It's a claim. Which no one has proven or can prove. Remember the prophet in Abaddon? In Abaddon here, in Nigeria. One Sunday morning, he went to the zoo. They said, don't go. He said, no, 
I serve the God of Daniel. Now Jesus has come. I have a better component. I have the Bible. I have Jesus. I have the angels. I have God of Daniel. The same God that delivered Daniel from the mouth of lion in the den. He will deliver me from these lions in the zoo. The lions will be saying, oh, oh yeah, the earth. You have my prayer today. This meat is coming. <laughs> the prophets enter. Boom. They ate him as breakfast. <laughs> This, you cannot demonstrate your belief in God. You cannot. You end up in shame. That's why they condemn you to God will punish you. You see what God will do. You are kind of, yeah, I am. I'm not denying that. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 to end also. Hear what he said. Loser's mentality. See what loser's claim. He said, we face death every day because of Jesus. Why are you facing death every day because of Jesus when you claim that Jesus has died for you? His death is supposed to remove death for you. It's supposed to. You're not supposed to be facing death. You go and preach Jesus. Why are you facing death? If you can perform miracles in the name of Jesus, nobody will kill you. But to show you you are bringing your religion to, 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 to attack another religion, of course they will kill you. But if you can perform the miracles Jesus said in Mark, in Mark chapter 16, 15 to, uh, 17 to 18, if you can perform those miracles anywhere, nobody will kill you. Are you telling me you go to hospital to heal the sick and they kill you? You're telling me you go to where they are suffering and you begin to feed them by miracle and they will kill you? No. He said we face death every day because of Jesus. He said, our body show what his death was like. So his life can be seen in us. It's not true. His life cannot be seen in anywhere. Your life does not show that Jesus died and rose again from death for you. You're still suffering. And you're still dying like everyone. This is loser's mentality. He said, verse 12, he said, this means that death is working in us. But life is, I mean, hear what he said. He said, this means that death is working in us, but life is working in you. The same person that said they believe the same thing with you. But hear what he said. That's Paul said to them. That means death is working in us, but life is working in you. So I that preaching Christ in you, death is working in me. But you that, for you, if you believe what I'm saying, life is working in you. It doesn't make sense unless you are a believer. Moron. Verse 13. He said, in the scriptures, in the scriptures, what somebody scripted, what somebody wrote, not in the truth, not in the reality, not in fact. Say, in the scriptures, it says, I spoke because I had faith, not because I had knowledge. No minister of God is speaking because they have knowledge. No child of God is speaking because they have knowledge. They spoke because they, they speak because they have faith. That's all they have. Wonderful hope. Strong faith. That's all they have. Coupled with what? Love. He said, I spoke because I have faith. We have this same kind of faith. There's no knowledge in faith. There's no knowledge with faith. He said, I spoke because I had faith. He said, we have the same kind of faith. So we speak because he had the line. He said, we have, hear what he said, he said because, I spoke because I had faith. He said, we have the same kind of faith here. So we speak because we know. No. He said, you, you speak because you have faith. You have faith. Now see how they change it. They said, because we know that God raised the Lord Jesus to life. No. You don't know. You believe it. You don't know. Because if you saw you know that God raised Jesus from the dead, you have to know the date it happened. Nobody can give you the date God raised Jesus from the dead. Why? Because it never happened in reality. It's a story made up and put in the Bible and used it to enslave us. And just as God raised Jesus, here, here, here another lie. And just as God raised Jesus, he will also raise us to life. It's a lie. There's no place anybody has died and any man of God raised them to, to life. In the name of God, in the name of Jesus. No place. You see Adeboye, Pastor Adeboye, right? One of the richest man of God, one of the richest men of God in Nigeria. His son died, was in last year, lost two years. 
No resurrection. He was drinking tea with God, but his son died. No resurrection. No, no, no. They, they, they try medically to resuscitate him. It never happened. They say, yeah, Otiku, you don't die. <laughs> so he buried his son. He's supposed to be his son burying him. That's one of the things Christians claim. I will not bury my son. I will not bury any of my children. My children will bury me in Jesus' name. Uh, you are a great man of God buried his son. <laughs> and if God does not take it, he will bury his grandchildren too. Because he want to stay alive for you people. Why you believe there is heaven? You don't want to go die and go to heaven. He's celebrating long life. Uh, have you done his birthday, birthday celebration this year? Ndara. Said so then he, he will bring us into his presence together with him. <laughs> so why can't he bring you into his presence together with him now you are alive? It's over your dead body. When you die, he will raise you and bring you into his presence together with you. And all of this has been done for you. So more and more people will know how kind, how kind God is. And we praise and honor him. No, God is not kind. I will never praise and honor God. Because God does nothing. I will praise and honor my fellow human beings. People that help me. You see people, I, I, I'm in a hotel, even the people that clean the room, I praise them, I honor them. I respect them. God cannot do that. They make the room and they flit it so that mosquito will not bite me. I praise them. I don't praise God. I honor people that exist. You can get upset all you want. What will you do? What will you do? Nothing. You cannot kill me either. Yeah, even if you shoot me, boom. They say I died. No, I'm not I'm coming back. Verse, verse 16, he said, We never give up. Of course, they never give up in their ignorance. Boasting in their ignorance, boasting in their poverty, boasting in their suffering, boasting in their insecurity. They will never give up. He said, Our bodies are gradually dying. <laughs> Under the God Almighty who can do all things. Our bodies are gradually dying, but our, remember what I'm showing you. They are losers in this world and they are winners in the heaven. So they are telling you that in this world, our bodies are gradually dying, but we ourselves are being made stronger each day. You cannot. Uh, somebody made that, uh, that post on Facebook. Uh, I know why it's what he said. As, as, as your day increases, so your, your strength will increase. It's a lie. As your day increases, so your strength decreases, no matter who you are. No matter who you are, it will decrease. That's why they tell you, Abraham was 100 years old when he impregnated Sarah. It's a lie. Or 90 years old when he impregnated Hagar. It's a lie. It can never happen. Naturally, if you see his penis, it's dropping. <laughs> no, but even if you walk out more than me, it will never. Yeah, since yesterday I was having pain. Yesterday I could have, I could have always my knee like this. Because I was... Um, I was doing squatting like this, so I think I'm still that too young. So, you know, I'm getting older. So, pain. Since yesterday, I've been having serious pain. But I'm okay. See me, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> the older you get, the weaker you become. Your strength will never increase. No God can increase your strength. No God can do that. Learn it from your elders. Learn it from your elderly father, including your elderly ministers of God. Learn it from the Pope, the Catholic Pope. He's in the wheelchair today. He is, he is getting weaker. The vicar of Christ, the one you say he's representing Peter, he's in the wheelchair. He cannot stand up like me for a long time. Even if he stands, he stands with Ken or with Walker. He, got, he needs support. God is not in support. <laughs> Hear what he says. He said, this, this little trouble here, you see, that's their body gradually dying that they call it trouble. He said, these little troubles are getting us ready for an eternal glory that will make all our troubles seem like nothing. That's exactly how they're living. These people are suffering. They're having troubles everywhere. But it seems like nothing to them. Why? Because they have glorious hope. Strong faith. In God, they will inherit heaven at last. Heaven at last is my goal. You see nonsense somebody is saying? Yet that person will be complaining. Government is not working. Nothing is working in this country. People are wicked. But you say heaven at last is your hope. So why are you complaining? 
when I was in Nigeria, I never complained about the hardship in Nigeria because I know how to make it. For you to make it, you have to be connected. You have to be corrupt, period. And I was connected then too. And I was making it too. <laughs> Despite all the years I wasted in where I was locked up. Have you been locked up for three years? Three years. Yeah, I've been. I've been there. I've tested that. <laughs> you see, that's one of the reasons I sound the way I sound. Very bold. So these people, they are ready to suffer, enjoying it. They are ready to have property, enjoying it. Although they are sowing seed for it to disappear, but they say it's like nothing to them. I'm not suffering. Who says I'm suffering? I'm not suffering. I'm a child of God. My God loves me. That's what they have. I have hope in God. I have faith in God. So it seemed like nothing to them. He said, here, here another lie they tell you, those people with losers mentality, they said, things that are seen don't last forever. It's a lie. Things that are seen last forever. It is thing that, are, that, 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 that is not seen, it does not exist. You can see the sun, it lasts forever. You can see me, I last forever. Nature is forever. You cannot terminate nature. All those end time and end of the world is all lies. We are living in the last days. It's all lies. You know how many years that they wrote that in the Bible? And you are still living in the last days. When is your last day going to expire? Oh, this is last days. Perilous time will come. People will be haters of God. Idiot. So that's why you are a hater of yourself. Because you don't want to be a hater of God. It's better you care for yourself than to love God. Love is evil. God is love. Love is of God. Don't practice love. Practice nature. Live your human life naturally. He said, things that are seen don't last forever, but things that are seen are eternal. It's a lie. This is why we keep our minds, hear what he says. This is why we keep our minds on the things that cannot be seen. So, those who keep their minds on things that cannot be seen can never live well in this world because they see themselves as losers in this world. Though this world, this flesh perish, this world is nonsense, this world is not my home, I'm just passing through, heaven is my home. Such people, you can never build anything with them, you can never make anything with them. You have to trash them to live. You say, how about those scientists who are Christians, those inventors who are Christians or who believe in God? They have to put that faith aside. They remove that cloak of faith and put on the cloak of science to invent things, to, to build things. They don't invent anything by faith. It's not God revealing anything to them. They went to school, they used their brain, engaged their brain and begin to work it to come into reality. It is time you wake up my people know that there is no god there is no jesus there is no invisible being somewhere that will come for our aid it's time we wake up let us unite again and begin to say come let us make come let us build and there's no force good or bad that can stop us again let us learn from the mistakes of our ancestors ancient ancestors